Well, this morning I got a treat for you, I think, and uh, not a treat, a blessing. Um, it's been a while that we've talked about this, but uh, we have a young couple in our church that's experienced some stuff. That's all I'm going to say about that. But uh, Jonathan and Sarah Tucker, I've known for a long time, and to must love them. We got two beautiful kids back there sitting with Grandpa, and... Uh, and an aunt, I think, and uh, so glad to have you guys with us, but uh, Johnson told me months and months ago, he said, Pastor, I need to tell my story, but every time we tried to get him to do it, he chickened out. Well, no, not every time, but it's only been once, actually. I wouldn't say chickened out. It's a big deal, and if you've never stood in front of your church and tried to share your story, um, you can't fully understand what they're about to do, and so he's not a preacher even though he may be someday, who knows? Sarah might be. But they want to tell their story, and they have one. And, and I said, yes, I want you to do that. So we've sat, we've talked, we've talked about it, and uh, they're not going to have to share anything to embarrass themselves. But I think sometimes we sit in church, we look around, and because you know we're conditioned to lie, when people say, how you doing? And we say, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm good. We're going to find out today that there's people in our church from things from their past that God has now saved them and changed them, delivered them, whatever you want to call it. And, and you, you know, you're going to hear some of this and go, man, I'd have never thought that. That's a good thing. <laughs> but, but the point is we got people in here from all kinds of walks of life, all kinds of backgrounds. And no one in here is perfect. No one. And we're only sinners saved by grace, right? But sometimes we need to be reminded, and this is going to hopefully burden on some other folks that has a story that maybe God will strengthen you to come and, and, and be able to share in front of your church family your story. And uh, I'm going to come up and close in a little bit, but it's going to lead into something that I'm feeling very strongly about for our church today. And so I want you to make them welcome. I want you to engage with them. They're going to be nervous, um, but they're going to be used of the Lord today to share their story, to encourage us for ours and our journey. Amen? You guys ready? All right, come on up. Let's give them a hand as they come today. So I'm Sarah. This is Jonathan. We've been together about 10 years now, mm -hmm. I think. Married about six. Um, we definitely had our struggles, and we've just felt led lately. It's been really heavy on our hearts to share this. So here we are. We're going to give our testimony, and I'll let Jonathan start. First, I'll just open up a prayer. Dear Jesus, I just ask you to come down and help everyone right now. You know the world is a messed up place. Seems like the last couple of years, people need you more than anything right now. And I just ask you to come down, help us to be an encouragement, and help people, and just to help them have faith and trust in you. I just ask you to help right now, Jesus, and thank you. I just say, it's only because of God I'm up here right now. And I'm so thankful, and we're not, I'm not up here only because of Jesus. And I remember the devil fought me when I was uh, going to tell Pastor Randy. I was supposed to speak this de December 12th. And uh, the devil's like, Jonathan, you're not perfect. You can't get up there and preach in front of the people or tell them your testimony. And I remember I drive semi and I was driving and I mean, I'm in the truck for 12 hours a day and the Lord says, Jonathan, he says, you're never going to give your testimony because you're, uh, you're never going to be perfect. So I, I knew right then I had to share because we're never going to be perfect. But God, God knows the true us. So, yeah. But I, uh, as I was driving, uh, it was probably after I pa told Pastor Randy that I wasn't going to do it that one Sunday. It was like a week after. Uh, I was listening to, uh, happened to click on Pandora 
and a song came across my, it uh, just came across, and I was listening, and it was called The Power of the Cross. And I, before that, I'm like, Lord, how do I share my testimony? I, don't, I can't, I'm not good at speaking. My wife can tell you, I mean, 20 years ago, a uh, state interview, I mean, she may, still makes fun of me today for the interview I gave, so, I mean. It was a good one. Maybe I can put it on Facebook and show you all. <laughs> but, I mean. The Lord gave me this song, and it said, The Power of the Cross. So I'm going to go through each verse and try to give my testimony to you guys. It's the first verse, it says, The past that held regret over my head is gone. These chains are ashes now that once were rusted on. I was a runaway. Now I have found the home. I remember 18 years. For 18 years, I was bound in sin, and I couldn't overcome it. I, was, I mean, I played the Christian life. I mean, I would go, I was raised in church. And I came, I mean, Sundays and Wednesdays. I mean, I played it. I was, I mean, I just came to church every Sunday. But every, every after that, I would, I would live in sin. I mean, and I was tired of it. And I remember um, at one time, I was so, so dark. And, the, and I was praying and praying, Jesus. Do whatever it takes to get me home. Um, and I didn't know at the time, but after the situation went on, my wife was praying and my parents were praying, Lord, do whatever it takes to get him home. I knew I was lost. And I knew if I didn't get my life right, my life right with Jesus, I was going to end up in hell. I knew I was on the verge of it. So I remember praying that prayer. And then the week after, I went, and went to a place, and I got arrested. But Jesus knew what he was doing. I remember sitting in that cop car, praying to Jesus, Lord, help. Help me, dear Jesus. And I was so scared. I've never been in trouble in my life. I mean, I grew up and was afraid of getting in trouble. And I remember... Uh, sitting in the jail cell, I was like, Lord, please put me in a cell by myself. <laughs> Scary, and he did. Uh, and that night I was sitting in that jail cell, praying, Lord, please help me. <laughs> I'm tired of running away from you. <laughs> and I was laying there praying, and the Lord gave me the vision of hell. And it was so real. It was scary. I mean, I could see, I could, there was flames, there was people screaming, help, help. Right then I knew I had to change. I mean, it was so real. I mean, it's just, if only any of you guys could see that, you would not want to go there. Next verse, it says, my mind was a ghost town haunted by yesterday until your hand reached down, pulled me out of the grave, a freedom found only Jesus' name. For you, I remember for like a year or so after everything happened, I was afraid to being judged. I didn't want to, I mean, we still went to Lima first, but I just, I didn't feel right. And we, we probably didn't go to a church for a year. And I'm like, I just, I couldn't go. I mean, I felt like I was being going to be judged. I remember when Pastor Randy uh, posted on Facebook about the church for the, or the perfect church for the unperfect people. I'm like, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Because we were praying that God would give us a church. And this is a church that loves everyone no matter what. And I, know, I feel so, so, like you feel family here. And I'm so thankful that God opened up this church because it is the perfect church for the unperfect people. And it says, I am forgiven, no longer lost. Now I am living in the power of the cross. Through everything, I know I am truly forgiven. I know I will finally end up in heaven by the grace of God. 
It is only because of Jesus that I am up here right now. I will never forget where I come from. And I always pray, Lord, don't ever let me forget where I came from because I do not want to go back there. I, I mean, I know there's memories that I don't like. It's, I, it's living, that th- living that past, I don't, I don't like it. But like just, I was able to go to take my semi to get service down past Columbus. And I was, it just seemed like, a, Lord, I was able to pray for that jail as I was passing Marysville. And then on my way back, we only, everyone is sinned. We're not perfect. But Jesus knows the true us. The, the father gave his son so I could be set free. And now the scales are gone. My eyes can finally see. I'll tell the world of Jesus what Jesus has done for me. And I remember the scales were over my eyes for years. The devil had me so, so deceived. I mean, it was, it was awful. I mean, I remember two times I went in, I mean, the darkest, darkest place. I mean, I look back, I'm like, how did I ever get to that place? But it was so dark, and, um, and I was held at gunpoint, and I, sh- I knew I should have been killed right then. And that's the last, time I, uh, the, last time I, the last time I was held at gunpoint. I'm like, Lord, that's when I knew I had to change. I'm like, Lord, please help me. And that's when I was praying, Lord, just do whatever it takes to get me home. And, I, and like now it's like after everything, and I, and I know it's only because of God that he, his mercy and his grace that saved me. And it's like now I want to tell Jesus or tell people about Jesus. And there was this time, and uh, I don't, I don't, it's not me, it's Jesus. There's this one time I was driving and I passed this guy three different times along the road. And uh, he was, he was, he had to be homeless. He was laying there sleeping. This is the middle of the country. And I'm like, Lord, please help him be there the last time. Because I, I passed him every single time. And I was able to get him a drink and a coffee. And I'm like, uh, was able to pray with him and uh, tell him Jesus loved him. But that wasn't, I would have never done that for 18 years. I was always afraid and always, always afraid. And I was, I mean, pretty much figured, uh, ashamed and figured I'd be made fun of or something like that if I uh, would tell people about Jesus. But now it's like, after you come uh, after you go through what you did for 18 years and you come out of it, you want to share the love of Jesus. Amen. And so I'm just so thankful. I mean, because if anyone ever goes through that, I mean, you're excited to come out and you don't want it to. I mean, I'm not afraid. I'm, I'm, I want people to know Jesus. I want them to make heaven their own. It says, I am forgiven, no longer lost. Now I am living in the power of the cross. Goodbye to sorrow, welcome my joy. Now I am living in the power of the cross. I know God wants us to be set free. He wants us to have joy every single day. I mean, I know it seems like the world today, I mean, there's so much trouble and uh, trials and people are going through so much, so much, but the Lord wants us to live in joy and happiness. And he has so much joy out there for everyone. As long as we can just receive it and don't let the devil fight. I just know that the Lord just has so much joy out there and happiness. And he wants us to be happy. He wants us to just live every day of our life knowing it and just being happy. And on that cross, how true, this through sacrifice, the old made new. This life I live in faith knew Jesus' name. I know Jesus loved me no matter where I was. I mean, it's just hard to believe that through all the sin I was in, Jesus loved me no matter what. And he loves anyone and everyone that's going to come through this door. They could look raggedy and everything, but he loves them just as much as he loves the Christians. We are not the judge. God is the only judge. So,
Last verse, it says, thank you, O God, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Thank you for the cross. Praise you, O God, I praise you. Jesus, I praise you. Praise you for the cross. And I just, I just praise Jesus often and thank him for everything. And like, if anyone needs his help, Jesus is there. I mean, he was there for me living in sin. I mean, he's going to be there for you and just, I mean, he has so much love for you and he, he cares in his, his only, uh, goal is to get us all home and he, I mean, no matter what. So, and I, and if, um, just think about if God can get me through the pits of hell, he can get anyone through anything. So if any of you guys are struggling or have sickness or, uh, I mean, he's going to get you through and just, I mean, my wife, I'm only, it's only because of grace of God and his love and that Sarah is still here with me today because if it was any other person, I know I wouldn't have a wife. She stuck, stood by my side and loved me no matter what. I know I was hard to love, but she was always there. And I'm thankful for her. And I'm thankful for my kids. And I'm thankful for Pastor Randy and Pastor Dickie. I know they often talk about when they're telling the truth and telling, telling it straightforward, that's what we need to hear so much in the church today. They want to sugar, sugarcoat it. I mean, it's, it's, and it's, I'm just thankful for them. And I, just, and I just last night praying with Wesleyan, and his prayer was, thank you for dying on the cross, and thank you for this church. This church is so wonderful and it means so much. And if anyone is struggling and is not perfect, this is the perfect place for you. Okay, I'm just kind of gonna kind of give my testimony um, through everything that's all that's went on. Um, I struggled just as much as him. I may not have been doing the same things as him, but I felt completely betrayed. By Jonathan for so many years. Um, I spent so many days, so many nights sitting at my house alone, just wondering what he was doing, where he was at. Um, I felt so alone. I had always prayed for God to just let him leave, to just let him go, get out. I, didn't, I did not want him there. Um, I had so much hate in my heart for him. And I could not see a way out of that at all. I lost so much of my self-worth, so much of my self-esteem going through all of this. Um, I, I could not imagine, like, God, why, did you, why would you put me through this? Why, why am I going through this? Or how are you going to get me through this? It was so hard to see. I, could just, I just had the tunnel vision. The devil was just trying to defeat me every day. Um, I felt like God didn't care. You know, I begged him to change our circumstances, but it was not happening, and I didn't understand that. Um, I felt like I wasn't worthy enough of God's love or Jonathan's love or anyone's love, really. Um, I just prayed. I remember so many times praying that God would just fill this void in my heart, like bring me some kind of joy. And I remember thinking, like, if you want me to stay with him, you have to give me some joy. You have to fill that void in my heart. And it, it just seemed like years that I was not getting answers. But I know that God was right there beside me through the whole thing, even though it felt like he wasn't. Um, I, I got mad at God lots of times because he wasn't fixing it when I wanted him to. But I understand now, I realize now that there was a reason for that, that it was not better, like, instantly. Um, and I am so thankful for that. I truly am. Like, I would never want to have to go through something like that again. But... That's the only reason why I'm able to stand here today, why we're able to stand here today and give our testimony. That's the only reason why I have a new love for Christ and for Jesus. And that's the only reason why I live for him now. Um, I understand that <clears throat> there was a bigger purpose for my pain, um, that he was shaping me and teaching me and growing me into the person that I am today. Um, I just remember... I remember feeling so burdened down, this heavy, heavy weight on my shoulders all the time. I remember having to go to work pretending everything was okay, but inside it was, it was hurting so badly. 
And I remember sitting, sitting on my bed, on the edge of my bed, two feet on the floor, staring at a wall right in front of me. Tears absolutely just running down my face, but feeling no emotion at all. I had none. And it's like I could, I was, I was just numb, I guess. But I remember that sitting there alone. I was anxious. I was depressed. I was just felt so alone so many nights, so many days just sitting there. And it seemed like I would just sit there for hours. And I felt like I had always tried to control things with his addiction. And obviously I couldn't. And so I had, it took a lot for me to realize that. And God showed me that. I remember sitting there on my bed one night and like feeling this heavy, heavy weight on my shoulders and just asking God to please take it from me. I can't do this anymore. I'm at my wit's end. You've got to take it from me. And it was like it's something that I cannot explain, the weight that is lifted off of your shoulders and just how relieved you feel. And I literally like felt it come off of me. And I knew right then and there that God was with me and that he is always with me when he feels so far away. He's still there. And God's peace is so everlasting, and it compares to nothing at all. Um, I have a verse here. John 14, 17 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. This peace that I received that night was also the same peace that I got on the same, not the same night, but a different night that I was praying for him for something to happen major that would change him. When I pray, prayed that prayer, it was, again, just lifted off of me. And I knew that God was going to take care of us. Um, through all of that, I've, I've received that peace from God. He's blessed, that, blessed me with that. And, you know, things that I face today, I just, I'm reminded of that. And I go back to that. And <clears throat> I just have that peace. And it's just so, it's so amazing. Like, if you've never experienced that before, it's, it's hard to explain, but it, it really is so amazing. Um, I, I try to face every battle that I go through now with there is a bigger purpose, I just don't see it yet attitude. Um, I try to find the joy in the battles because in the battles, that's where God is. So there's joy. Um, I just, I think when God interrupts your plan or your life, that he's only doing it to accomplish his purpose. Um, I feel like there is purpose in your pain. You know, this pain, it may never, it may feel never ending. It may totally encompass you. It may suffocate you. But you just got to learn to trust God, and he will get you through it. Um, I always had a Bible verse, and I had it written down on our chalkboard in our house that I would always go back to when the devil tried to creep back in, placed out in my heart, my mind. Um, it's Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all ways submit to him. He will make your path straight. This gave me so much comfort and so much healing. And I read that daily, pretty much. But, um, you know, we serve a God that's bigger than anything we face. And we just need to trust. It's so hard sometimes, but... He is right there, and we just need to trust him. Um, I, through all of this, I've experienced firsthand the greatness of God and how much he loves us. Um, you know, he restored my love, not only for Jesus, but for Jonathan also. He restored my trust. He restored our marriage. Um, we are not perfect. Our marriage is not perfect still, but we are not where we used to be, and that's because of the grace of God, and I give him all the glory for that. Um, you know, I think Jonathan is a perfect example of redemption. He is no longer a, sin to his, um, a slave to his sin. And I just think that's, that just, it just really blows my mind how God works and how amazing he is. Um, <clears throat> another verse I had was James 1.12. Blessed is the person who keeps on going when times are hard. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Um, we can truly rest in this verse, knowing this promise from God to us. I give all the glory to God. You know, he brought Jonathan out of the pits of hell. 
He made our marriage new again. He filled our hearts with joy. He gave us a purpose, and it was all through his grace and mercy. Um, I remember praying. We were sitting together one night after everything, and I remember praying that one day we would be able to stand up here and give our testimony. And today's the day, and here we are, and I am so thankful for that. I am so happy, and, you know, it's just like when you're doing God's work, it's just nothing else matters. It's really nothing else matters. Um, as we continue to, you know, face our battles, because as Christians, we're not guaranteed a life without tribulation, and, you know, we can rest in that, in the truth, and the word that God is always with us. Um, I just, kind of like Pastor Randy said, I encourage you, if you have a testimony, to get up here and share it, because there were so many nights I would YouTube testimonies, and it would honestly get me through, like, just to see how God worked in people's lives. And, you know, I encourage you, it's scary, it really is scary, but I encourage you to get up here and do it, you know, in God's timing. Um, I got one other thing, and I forgot. And it's like, I was thinking, I had this, and I forgot to share, but any of us that's gone through something, and we're afraid of being judged, and this song I hold dearly to my heart, and it's, I listen to it all the time, and it's like my song that it says, uh, for, king, for king and country, God only knows. God only knows what you've been through. God only knows what they say about you. God only knows how it's killing you. But there's a the kind of love that God only knows. God only knows the real you. I mean, God only knows the real me. He knows the real you. I mean, and I just think about that. And it's like, if any of you are afraid of what people might think about you or say about you, God knows the real you, and it doesn't matter what other people, like my parents, they were, they didn't want me to get up here because they were afraid of what people might, my, what my extended family might say, but I'm like, mom, dad, it's, I don't care what people say, think about me, God knows the true me, and knows my heart, and God knows you guys, so I just, I just hold, hold on to that song, and it's just, anytime the devil tries to fight, I just think, People's going to talk about us. There's going to be judged. We're going to be judged no matter what we do. But God only knows. So now what? What do we do with that? Hopefully it's a relief to some. God knows. He's got you. And nobody should judge you by your present, much less your past. And I got a feeling none of you are going to treat them any differently. And I told him, I said, the hardest part about speaking, as soon as you get done, you'll think of all the things you wanted to say you didn't and all the things you shouldn't have said that you did. But whatever you say, God's in control. It's going to be all right. I hope you'll affirm them and uh, bless them for being so vulnerable. It's not easy. But the real goal of today was somebody telling their story to hopefully help you on your story. You're not too far gone that God can't save you. Jonathan knew better by his own admission, grew up in a church, but for 18 years was held captive by sin and Satan until God broke the chain. And wherever you're at on your journey and whatever may be holding you back, whatever may be gripping you, God knows. And he wants you free. He doesn't want you bound by addiction. He doesn't want you bound by, by sin. And held back from God's providence. I mean, again, you see them. They're the model couple with the cutest kids in the world. I mean, if nothing else, they made beautiful children. Right? And they're back there. I hope they're smiling. But the point is, listen. Everything can look good on the outside, but God knows. And I just want you to be able to be honest and be free. And, you know, one thing about Dickie and I. You know, our, we got some kind of public stories. 
so people know stuff and, and whatever. And I'm okay with that because then it helps you know that I do get it. <laughs> I know about sin. I know about temptation. I know about failure, and I know about what it takes to get back up with God's help and stand on a pulpit again. Ain't easy. But God knows my heart. And I love those that try to judge your heart. They're great people. <laughs> it's a tough one. I, I advise you not to do that, by the way. It's in the book. <laughs> Amen. So, what are we going to do with this today? We are going to play that song that Jonathan alluded to. And, John, I think you have it ready. And, and uh, I just want you to ponder your own story, your own place. Are you where you want to be with God? Do you need to be closer? Do you want more? Is this all there is? Ponder where you're at on your journey with God. Let's listen to the song, and then we're going to have prayer at the end.